Welcome back everyone to another video. Today I want to talk to you about uh, adjusting your rear droop. Um, with a 12 scale car, with it being a uh, split chassis, obviously the rear of the car uh, has a pivot point and uh, that pivot point is controlled by the, the shock. Now, for those of you that don't know what droop is, when the car is lying flat or, or is on the worktop as we have it now and I just lift the shock up or lift the middle of the shock up you can see that the car has some up travel if you look in the bottom right hand corner of the video there that is up travel this is known as droop this is rear droop and so to adjust this uh, it can be quite uh, a fiddly process and from my experience uh, having learned and seen others applying their rear droop it's really set in the right manner so I thought I'd do a little video on, on how to get that set correctly so to give you an idea of the amount of droop that we're looking to run um, on a normal 12 scale car you'd run between 0.8 and 1.2 of rear droop uh, so we'll work around those figures now the amount of droop is uh, adjusted by the length of the shock so the length of this shock is effectively allowing the car to rise up it's creating the length of the shock is creating the amount of the car and the best way to show you that I just take the shock off. The length of the shock is dictating how much the car can make this motion. So that would be droop, the amount that the uh, middle of the car rises up. And as I say, that is governed by the length of this center shock. So You've got a couple of options with a with a shock on how to adjust the length. Firstly, on most shocks, you'll have a, a grub screw in here that adjusts the end of the shock. Allows you to take the spring off, obviously, but also it allows you to push or pull the end of the shock up and down the the shock shaft and so if you were to have it right at the very end where the grub screw could still get good purchase on the shock shaft you'd almost have the shock at its longest in terms of where this would be attached to the shock shaft and then you'd have even more adjustability by unscrewing this coupling here at the end to give you more length in the in the in the shock itself so what I tend to do is I would give myself a little bit of uh, space in here so I wouldn't screw it all the way up i will give myself a little bit of space so it allows me to then shorten the, the shock when it goes onto the to the car I then loosen the adjuster at the top of the shock now this plays an important role and I'll explain what what role that plays in a moment so at the, at the moment I've got full adjustability at this end and I've got full adjustability at the other end as well by the measures that I put in place so now what I'm going to do is going to make sure I hold the shock shaft gently and then I'm going to push the the end all the way up to the shaft. And then I'm going to pop the shot back on the car. Pop it back on the end. Uh, 
And so now, when the car is now on the uh, on the workbench here, and I bring my camera around in the bottom right hand corner, I can't actually fit a ride height gauge underneath at all. It's actually completely onto the, the deck. Now, at this point, it's because the shock is actually slightly compressed. And the way that we can now compress the shock and therefore raise up the middle of the car is by screwing the coupling back down. So now I've reached the bite point and now you can see I've got a little bit of travel, a little bit of movement. Now at this point you want to make sure that you know the ride height that you're aiming for. I'm aiming for a 3.4 on the front and 3.6 in the rear and then around 3.6, 3.5 in the middle so that there's a, a nice slope from the back of the car to the front of the car. Now, I know that that's not enough so far to, to measure. So as I'm screwing that coupling in, what's happening is it's raising up the middle of the car. So I've got a 2.6 minimum there, so it still can't get underneath the car, so I still have more to go. Now it can slide underneath the car. Now what I want to do is measure the rear of the car. So I've got 3.6 on the rear. I'm going to measure in the middle of the car and I'm going to slide the ride height gauge under so that I can get an understanding of where I am with my ride height. Still need to go just a touch more. And now at this point it's really subtle the amount that you'll need to slide the uh, uh, wind the coupling in. And now I've reached my 3.6. Don't touch too far there. Perfect. So I've now got 3.6 in the middle, 3.6 at the rear, and I've got 3.4 at the front. So at this point, I've got the correct ride height in the middle of the car, but I've not set the droop yet. So now I'm going to lift the car up in the middle, and then I'm going to remeasure. Now in the middle, I've got 5.8 millimeters of droop, or should I say height. So I've got 5.8 uh, ride height when I lift the middle up. If my middle ride height when it's settled is 3.6, I've therefore got 2.2 millimeters of droop, which is far too much. That's because the length of the shock is too long. So I need to shorten up the length of the shock. Now, because I left myself a little bit of a gap in here, it now allows me to wind this end back into the coupling. And that's now shortening up the shock. So that when I then lift up, it will then give me less total lift. Now the total lift is down at 5.4. So it shortened it down a little bit. Now if I've got 3.6 of ride height, I'm looking to make the middle only lift up 4.8 maximum, 4.6, depends how much you're going for. So I need to wind in a little bit more. Try again. little bit more fraction more and we're there perfect but now what's happened because I've shortened up the shot the shock it will have now reduced the right height in the middle and now I've only got 2.8 worth of ride height in the middle. At that point, I then wind the coupling in again. That will lift the middle up. So now I've got 
3.4, you know, just about 3.5 in the middle. And now I've got my adjusted droop in the middle as well. So I've got 3.6 and then I've got 4.8 when I lift it up. And I've now set the ride height and the amount of droop in the car. You can see it's a little bit of a faff, but if you start in the right place where the shock is long enough for you to then wind it back in, and then you allow yourself to wind the coupling in on the shock, you then end up in a good place. So I've got 3.6, 3.6, 3.5, and 3.4 on the front ride height. And I've got the correct amount of droop in the middle. If I wanted to shorten up the droop a bit more, all I'd do is wind in this part of the uh, shock to reduce the droop, but making sure that when you reduce the droop, you will need to increase the load on the spring because that will balance out the shortening of the shock and then lift it back up to make the, uh, to make the car have its ride height. You might want to watch that, watch that a few times because it's a, a, a fairly fiddly complicated process but once you get the hang of it it's just really about adjusting the length of the shock to make the amount of droop you want and then putting the preload on the spring to make sure that the right height is perfect. I hope that's been useful. Any questions feel free to fire them in the column below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all again next time.